about setting intentions for the new year. So as I'm reading this, I'd love for you all to take a moment to think of the things that you're grateful for in this last year and and also intentions that you're setting for the coming year because we'd love to invite you all to come on with us and share what your gratitudes are and what your intentions are. So um, we'll have you raise your hands after we're done reading these in the news pieces and then you'll have a chance to share. And there's gonna be a great community um, gratitude and intention setting presentation. So we're super excited to include you all in because each and every one of you is a part of the Million Mom movement. So gratitude, do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you know now have was once among the things you only hoped for. So let that sink in for a minute. Let's read it again. Gratitude, right? Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you have now was once among the things you only hoped for. So I really loved this quote. I found it and I wanted to share it with you. And then I wanted to share um, this in the news piece. So 12 intentions of gratitude. We found that when you set a, a mindfulness, mindfulness exercise of, you know, having gratitude every day, it can really get you in the positive mindset of being able to do the other things that might be more challenging because, and to move you forward, right? Like that quote that I just read you know, you might be grateful for things that in the past were like unattainable or things that you didn't even know were possible in your life. And now it is. So intentions for living a full day of gratitude. Close your eyes for a moment. Let's take a few deep breaths together. <sighs> all the way out and all the way in. And then notice how your breathing so often takes care of itself, right? We're just automatically breathing. But when we set some intention into it, we're moving the energy through our body and our breath is our breath of life. That's what keeps us alive, right? So let's commit to not only taking this miracle for granted, but see if you can take an inventory of the things for which you're grateful. Let them percolate through your mind and calm your body, thinking of five things that you're grateful for, which matter to you. So let's think about that for a minute. What are five things that you're grateful for that really matter to you? Things have, that you've been able to manifest in this last year. See if you can engage in the act of kindness today. Notice if you're pulled toward kindness for a stranger more than someone close to you or vice versa. Either way, offer your kindness with no strings attached. No need for recognition. Truly just notice the completeness and fulfillness of letting go of needing anything back. And bring to mind someone for whom you're grateful for. So who's somebody that you're grateful for today? And someone who has influenced you positively. Perhaps they're a protector, a benefactor. Maybe it's your mentor, a loved one. Someone for whom you're grateful for. And savor this image of this person in your memory. And try to allow that image of this person to be held by all of the cells in your body not just your mind, but throughout your body, savoring the feelings of gratitude for this person and notice what happens in your emotions and in your body when you do this. And at any point during your day, see if you can reflect upon the important things that you've learned today or yesterday. One important thing that you've learned, feeling gratitude for having learned this new thing. Today, you can let someone know that you're thinking of them. Send them a card. I know we're all doing our 40 and four right now. So, you know, we're calling lots of people, share your gratitude for them. I'm so grateful that you're in my life. I have something exciting I want to share with you, right? Um, write a note, send a text or an email, letting them know that you're thinking about them. Expect nothing in return to share your appreciation and your knowledge for this person. So there's lots of people I know we're grateful for. And at some point, see if you can sit quietly and allow the sense of peace to enter your heart. Allowing the sense of peace to flow into your heart, perhaps lighting a candle, creating a grateful intention, setting into the sense of peace, allowing the sense of peace to enter your heart, residing in this space of gratefulness for a few precious moments and forming the intention to show up absolutely wholeheartedly to everything you do today. Notice at the end of the day, if anything changed because of this intention to show up absolutely wholeheartedly. 
and seeing if you can make the decision to see your most challenging moments today as opportunities. Sometimes we can be challenged, but they are opportunities to grow. What might be making itself known available to you in hard times? How can you cultivate even small sentiments of gratefulness for the gifts that come with a struggle? Seeing your most challenging moments today as opportunities. And see if you can turn all of the waiting moments for the day into moments of heightened awareness. If you're waiting in line, waiting for a meeting, waiting to get somewhere, um, see if you can turn these moments into moments of heightened awareness. Try to be fully present in these times of what, what might be a blessing in disguise. The blessings and protections around you. Notice at the time in being things is a huge gift that you can enjoy. And if you share a meal with other people today, ask each person to share something for which they're grateful for. Maybe even two or three things for which they're grateful for. If you're eating alone, bring to mind something for which you are grateful for and dedicate your meal to that gratefulness. So these are some samples of intentions to cultivate and savor these feelings of gratitude each day. And so the things for which we have to be grateful are widespread for lessons from lessons to people to raw nature to the breath itself we have so much to be grateful for this this guided mindfulness meditation was by Sean Fargo and is an invitation to set intentions for living a full day of gratitude through the meditation you are guided to consider all the ways we can feel into the capacity for gratitude and how we might express it so setting an intention for gratitude simply by setting that intention to be grateful, we will likely begin to see shifts in our experience, or at the very least in the perception of the experience. So gratitude fills us with a sense of lightness and love, aligning us with the heart center at the core of our being. And we can set multiple intentions of gratitude, but we can also begin with something simple. So it could be as simple as I will welcome this day with an open and grateful heart. So simple gratitude exercises at any moment in the day, we can tune into the heart center, and explore our present level of awareness. And each moment we can ask ourselves, what is within me that I have to be grateful for? And what can I appreciate about the natural world around me? What lessons have I learned today and what will fuel my growth? So regardless of whether we perceive the day to be good or bad, we can expand the field of vision by opening to our experience with a compassionate heart. And I'll be sharing this link in the, in the chat. It will also be shared with the replay in our Million Mom Movement official group on Facebook. And I will pass it back to you, Taz. Thank you so much. I love that. You know, put in the chat, what are some ways that you practice gratitude? I would love to see because there is a magic in being grateful. There's a magic in gratitude. And we don't talk about this enough. When we have a grateful heart, what opportunities this actually allows in. And not only to be practiced, it's a practice, right? And that means it's something you need to be doing each and every single day, right? It doesn't need to be long. It can be 10 minutes. It could be five minutes. But the more we do it, the more we get into a habit, like Naeva was saying, now if something goes wrong in our life, we start looking at it differently. We start approaching it differently, right? Don't you see? We're like, oh, okay. Do you remember that expression, don't sweat the small stuff? Everything starts becoming the small stuff. Does that really matter? So what I like to do is I like to incorporate gratitude, not only for me, because this is something I've been practicing over 15 years, but along with my kids, right? Because I think if we can start showing kids to be grateful at a very young age, and we are going through the holidays, right? So all you mamas and papas out there, you know, during the holidays, what do we hear? I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Come on. We have to start showing our kids, how do we be grateful? So I always organize a toy drive, right? Let's organize, let's, let's give back. How can we donate? How can we give back to someone else who needs this more? Let's, you want a new toy? Well, how many toys do you want to give away to someone else who probably needs it more than you do, who probably will enjoy it more than you do at this very moment? 
right? Maybe we can go to the hospital and we can help out. We can bring some smiles to some kids who are there. Or how about volunteering at a soup kitchen, right? I, that used to be one of our favorite things to do. We would go, we would help out. They would see how having a nourishing meal caused so much joy. Can you m imagine that? How many times do we eat a day and we take it for granted? When's our next meal? Where's it coming from? Is it, there's a superfood? Is it organic? There's people who don't even have any of that. This is why we have our scholarship program that we offer to people who don't have the same opportunities. And we give them the gift of the opportunities and the business. Because once you have wealth, now you've opened up a whole new aspect of letting the good in. The nutrition, the abundance, everything matters, right? And also, so we do soup kitchens. We do, we go to hospitals. Um, oh, we used to do, there used to be a fundraiser back then called Kiva. Do you guys remember this back then? And you would buy a well for like families in Africa and you would feed their whole village. You know, we used to do that as well. I mean, something simple as water would help transform a community. So I want to know, what do you guys do to practice gratitude in your everyday life? Unmute, raise your hand and let us know, because I would love to hear this. Okay, Allison. Go ahead, Allison. So grateful for all of you. So grateful to be here. Thank you so much. And thank you for this whole community. Um, so the way I practice gratitude is just like that, sharing my gratitude for those around me. I don't hold back to say I love you or to say I really appreciate you did that for me or thank you for that advice or, you know, it's like oh, we sometimes we hold back thinking, oh, that shows weakness if we're if we're always thanking or, um, you know, I don't hold back. I share that and it feels so good. And people, you don't know how it could change someone's life. People need to hear that even just that little bit of appreciation for them and it'll make their day and that will ripple onto they're going to pay it forward and and do the same. So I really think we can all let our, our heart um, a little bit more on our sleeve sometimes, you know, when it comes to gratitude, it always helps. It never hurts and it really creates magic. I love that. You know, like going into the winter time, what do we see with a lot of people? They have a gloomy face, right? Just a smile. Like what Allison was saying, you know, tell someone, I love you. You know, Purium has these thank you cards that are pretty powerful. You can get those thank you cards and send us to every single person. Thank you. Thank you for being in our life. Thank you for being in my life. I appreciate you. Just these simple words and a smile can really transform someone's life. Kimberly, I would love to hear. I know you are a woman with a huge, ginormous heart. I... I'm so, I'm, it's like, it's the blood, it's my breath, it's, it's everything to be in a state of appreciation where you're just appreciating more. Allison, you hit it out of the park. I'm so grateful. Like when, when we really start to look at all the people that we've called in and that, and when, when you start a gratitude with each other as a practice, it's like, it just keeps appreciating. And Purium is, the major player of how we can start practicing being in appreciation for each other. And we just start shining the different facets that we see in each other. And it just, it gives us so many um, uh, like moments to be able to share how we see each other. And so I, I was just on a call with a man who I totally felt his energy and last night I messaged him. He, I, I, so I, I said it in a little, um, in a note. And I was like, I would love to hear how you've become the person that you are, because, you know, when you go online, you can feel certain people's energy. And he wrote back to me and we talked for about an hour today. And he was like, thank you so much for seeing me. And so I just love getting to be space and letting people share who they are. And, oh, it's just, it's amazing. So I'm, I'm in appreciation for everything. And 
my tub with the water, the clean air, the mountains, the sun. I mean, we could go on and on. So I'm so grateful for Amy and Dave. And, you know, it's um, it's Amelia's birthday today. So we can all wish Amelia a happy birthday. And it's 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 my greatest addiction. It's, it's appreciation, gratitude, and knowing that when we really love ourselves and we really have forgiven ourselves, we can be safe for everything out here in the world. And so I just, again, I'm in appreciation for all of you in a way that is just so much. And thank you, Taz, for being on the Million Mom Movement and making it so that there's other ladies that are going to step in and really show up and it's going to be amazing. So thank you all. I could go on forever. Let's do, let's do, love you all. Thank you so much, Kimberly. And I love what she said. She's addicted to appreciation. How beautiful is that? And you know, when we throw everyone at Curium, all the brand partners, everything we do is with gratitude, right? When we have a healthy happy hour, when we pour those little sample cups and we share it with every single person we meet, we always say at the end of this call, we say, reach out to the person who cares so much about you to invite you onto this call. This call doesn't come lightly. It comes with weight. We appreciate you so much that we want you to be part of our community. We want you to learn, to learn what we didn't know, to learn together, to share together, right? So when we go and we do a healthy happy hour, because this is the ultimate way to share our gratitude, to share our business, and to share what we learned, what we were doing, the ULT. It always starts with a ULT, right? So how we started. And then we start sharing it with every single person who gets attracted to our energy. And then they try it and they're like, wow, what was that? That was amazing. I've never felt better. For the first time in my life, they walk around a little bit. They come back. They're like, I have so much energy. I feel amazing. That's gratitude. That's giving the gift of love. There's so many ways we can show someone that we love them. And, you know, we need to start doing it. We need to start showing up in a bigger scale. We need to keep doing this regularly. We need to show people that, you know, breathing exercises are so important. Gratitude journals are so important. Let's like start having the intention to when we wake up in the morning. How are you waking up? Are you gravitating towards your phone? Or are you gravitating maybe to a piece of paper? Are you letting all of your feelings, all your emotions, all of your gifts and gratitude onto a piece of paper and saying, thank you. Thank you from our life, right? Makes you think. It makes you think about the whole year and where we are really going into the next year. Okay, I'm going to get to you, Pamela. Go ahead. Hello. Thank you, Taz, for your service with the Million Mom Movement. So grateful for that and this platform. Um, I think for me, to be able to show the most gratitude is giving my time to something. I just got to be part of something for Christmas called Shop of Wonders, where um, it's uh, moms or any any guardian actually can come in and actually shop, but it's all free for their their kids or the grandkids or whoever they're taking care of. And it's like, um, it, it's $300 worth of presents that they get to pick and we wrap them. And it's set up like, almost looks like FAO Schwartz minus the piano in the floor. And we had a mom who died two weeks before her appointment to come get her kids gifts. And we were able to call her best friend and her best friend came down and I helped her best friend shop and pick out gifts for these two kids. And they're going to get gifts that say love mom for Christmas, which is going to be really hard for them, but also really amazing. And, and I mean, that's just the best gratitude. And when these moms would look at me with tears in their eyes and say, you know, I can't believe that I'm here. I can't believe that I always have to. I feel like I'm always taking from the community. And I said, you know what? At one time, I was that person receiving. And now I'm the person giving and you're going to be here too. And that is just 
the best gratitude that that could fill me up for the rest of the year, I think. So giving time to something that that really means something. I'm so sorry, Pamela. That is it makes it puts everything into perspective. Right. Thank you so much for doing that. I know those kids will really, really appreciate it. And, you know, reflecting upon the year, what I'm really, really grateful for is my network marketing business. I mean, I hear so many moms, you know, they're so exhausted and they're rushing to work and they never have time with their family. They don't have this time freedom that we all have, that we all strive to have, that we're building, right? Because we're always building each and every single day. Network marketing is like a dream come true. I tell it to every single person, we have the freedom, we have the flexibility to live our life how we want, to make our own hours. There's no, there's no cap in our income. We can go as high as we want. And the most important thing, I know this is something so many people say, but this actually happens, personal development. I mean, if you look at the Million Mom Movement calls at the beginning, you know, like circa three, four years ago when I started, I didn't have speaking skills. You know, and today I'm like, how much I've grown. So it really transforms you on so many levels of how it really helps you on a personal development, on a community level. And that's why we're here supporting all of you. Does anyone else want to unmute and share their take? I would love to share. You? Oh, do you have anybody else? Go um, ahead, Naiva. I would love to just pivot. And I'm so grateful for all the gratitudes. I'm so grateful for our community here and all of you coming every Friday and supporting us here. And each and every one of you here is a part of the Million Mom movement. You're a part of this bigger Purium community. And we're so grateful for you and the light that you shine out in the world and the hope that you give people. I am so grateful for the people I've been able to help throughout the last year. And one of the things that brings me the most joy is getting to hear people tell me how great they feel in their health, how they're no longer, you know, in pain or having the symptoms that maybe they had prior to um, having these superfoods. And so I'm so grateful for Dave and Amy and for Purium being in my life and all of our lives and blessing us. And I'm extremely grateful for Willow, who is the person that shared Purium with me when I was on maternity leave. And this opportunity has allowed me to be a stay at home mom for the past nine years. And without Purium, like I've thought several times, like, what would I be doing if I wasn't doing this? Like, would I just be working nine to five every day and barely seeing my kids and being worn out? And, you know, like how life was before I was literally overwhelmed and undernourished. That's how my story starts. And I don't live my life like that anymore. I've been able to do things that I wasn't able to do in the past. This last summer, I was able to take my son back to South Dakota for his grandma's 70th birthday. And that's something that in the past was like unimaginable. I didn't have the money. I mean, it's expensive to live anywhere, but living in Hawaii is very expensive. And so that was something that in the past, I just couldn't even fathom. And I'm so grateful I was able to do that. And you know what my son told me when we left South Dakota, we were there for almost two weeks. And when we left, he told me, mom, that was the best two weeks of my life. He was so happy and grateful that I had taken him back to his grandma's 70th birthday. He got to hang out with his cousins that he, you know, barely knows because we live so far away and going over there is not an easy feat for us. And so I'm, I'm extremely grateful that we were able to make that happen. And so it's things like that, that bring me so much gratitude and joy is like being able to help others pay it forward. Um, you know, I'm so grateful that I have enough abundance now that I've actually been able to pay it forward to people that reached out to me that, you know, weren't ready for the scholarship program that we offer, which is a business scholarship. And so I just bought them some products because they were people that I loved, people in my family that I knew this would bless their health and that they absolutely needed it. And because they weren't able to afford it at the time, I just paid it forward. And that's something that in the past I didn't have the abundance for. I couldn't even barely, you know, maybe buy my own monthly products and much less think about buying somebody else a power shake or some superfoods. And so this is the blessing that 
just keeps on giving. Purium is such a huge blessing in each and every one of our lives and everybody that we pay it forward to. And I see that Dolander has something to share, so I'll pass it to you. And then I'd love to pivot to our intentions, and I have another article to share. So I'm going to get you, Dolander. Welcome. Hi, um, I'm Imam. You can hear me? Um, I'm grateful. It's been eight days since I went to do a, a major surgery. And I'm grateful for Perium. I'm grateful for meeting all y'all. Wait, excuse me. I'm grateful for meeting all y'all beautiful people. Uh, and, and being in the uh, mom's movement, the million mom's movement, I have grandkids. Um, I've learned so much. I have, have gained so much of knowledge and I have grandkids that needed help. So I put them on the product. I'm grateful for all the people that I know that I've met. I've seen a lot of my friends. I was sick and dying before Purim in May. Um, and I came into the uh, organization and I'm grateful that I found out about it. So now I'm telling everybody else and those who are sick who got on it, they are doing so wonderful. And it, it, it's just... Uh, looking forward to 2024 for my life to be better you know my health and um over this surgery and just doing telling everybody about period on how it helped through the process of me um going through and it's just been eight days and everybody talking about how great I look because it was a major surgery and in mm -hmm. eight days I'm able to walk and do the things I need to do around the house well, thank you so much for sharing that Let's get to a, a couple more before we go into intentions, Saeva. Okay. Okay. Kevin. Hello. How's it going? Um, Wonderful. I want to say that I am grateful for Taz. Um, and I know it's her last day with the Million Mom movement, as she said. And I wanted to say that um, Taz, I wouldn't be here without Taz because Taz introduced Perium to Allison, who is, who is my upline. And so I'm very grateful for that, you know, and everything, you know, all the blessings, you know, that that um, has created. And I just want to say, like, coming in, like, I'm grateful for Allison because she has a, you know, we were very similar, which is really important. You know, I think a lot of people find like sometimes they say they buy you buy they buy you before they buy Perium you know what I mean I think it's kind of like that you know for for a lot of people um and that was definitely our situation but also Taz as well like Taz is someone that I always looked up to from the beginning and I have always saw like sometimes you see people in the business and you can see yourself either either in them or a piece of them or a lot of relatability and I think there was a huge relatability from like her lifestyle and how she lives and what she talks about. And not only what I was trying either in that moment, what I was focused on, but also what I wanted to become as well, someone to look up to. And, and I think that's a huge blessing too, because you could, I mean, some people might start and who knows who's on their team sometimes or their uplines or whatever, like really like our, our team is really incredible all the way up to the top is such a huge, incredible blessing, you know, to be so grateful for, which I think is really unique, really rare and unique. You know what I mean? Um, and also like every single person I think that, you know, I, we work with and I, that any every purchase I make, I feel like I'm so grateful that it helps support your families as well which is unique too, because that's that's also not something that everyone gets a chance to. So many people are grateful. I'm so grateful these foods help me. I'm so grateful I can give these foods to others and help them, right? But also I'm very grateful all the way up to the top, every family that I support all the way up, like every purchase I know helps Allison and Jared's family and their kids, you know, get a chance to go to Thailand. You know, Taz's family gets a chance to live in Miami. Like I am genuinely, genuinely grateful for those things too. And so I think that's also a blessing, you know, that not everyone gets a chance to have because 
I even know some people, I mean, it's just the reality. Someone has an upline and they leave or whatever, something happens or, you know, they're not there or they're not supportive or they're just not in alignment. It's just reality. So to be blessed, like all the way up to like Ian Farrar, the number one brand partner, like, like Eric Mish, you know, like it's really unique. Um, so I just want, I want to say I'm grateful for it. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. You know, Kevin brings a great point in our community we have brand partners and how grateful are we to have attracted, attracted brand partners who caught onto our vision and my number one brand partner and Allison and Jared who caught on to my vision back then when I started, I didn't know how to speak. I didn't know how to share. I didn't know. I just know they needed this. I know they needed this. I know they needed to throw out all that junk that they were taking. I'm like, that is harming your body. We need to do something different. I have the solution. Listen to me. You know, when we do this, this is what I was doing to her. And she caught it. She saw it. She was like, yes, yes, everything. Yes. And I'm like, okay, you're saying yes to me. Wonderful. You know, it feels, we, you know, we, we tell everyone, don't take it personally. When we take it personally, I mean, like, especially when you're starting off in the business, you're like, you're really saying yes to me. Okay, great. I'm doing a good job. So we, we started on this business together. When I started this, she was the first person that I approached that I started talking to about it and who caught my vision. And you know what? I'm going to announce it. She will be our newest council member starting in January. And what a great transition. I mean, she has a family. She will be sharing the Million Mom movement, just as I have with her kids, showing how we cook with her husband. I mean, this is the perfect transition. And I have to let you know, you know, when you find someone who catches your vision, it's great. But when you find someone who really listens, who listens and gets it, who just gets everything you're saying and just makes it better, you know, how beautiful is that? It's like my kids. I always say my kids, yeah, okay, they look like me. They're like me, but they're a better version of me. This is what I always say. And this is what I say to each and every one of my brand partners. Kevin, all of my brand partners here, Dan, who's always on the call, every single one of you who are on the call, Wendy, every single person, you guys are all better than me. And my upline, my upline is amazing from Eric to Ian to Jane to Joel. I mean, you know, leadership starts from the top, right? So when it all trickles down to each and every one of us, Allison, do you want to say something? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful Taz for blazing the trail for me and so many that we have brought in, you know, um, I show my gratitude with success. And, <laughs> you know, I, I just want to always, you know, do better and better because I know it helps you and your family. And I am so grateful to be a part of the Million Mom movement. This has been a dream come true. I, you know, when I saw you doing it, I was like, wow, that's so cool. I could never do that. But that is so cool. Taz is amazing. Like, I just, you know, I put people like up here, right? I'm like, wow. That's amazing. And then when you can, you know, through through practice and through over and over and dedication and consistency, when you can see yourself in that role, that is the most rewarding thing in the world. So whenever you see people up there who are crowns or who are on the Million Mom Council or who are on calls and corporate things, know you can do it. Like, just know that it just, you know, I just dedicated myself to it. And I, I so align with everything about the Million Mom movement. It was the community I had prayed for uh, as a new mom. And Taz was the angel that that came into my life to bring this to me. So um, answered all my prayers and I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And Naeva, let's get into our intentions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Taz. And Allison, welcome to the council. I'm so excited to be able to work closer with you, get to know you even more. You're so inspiring. I love getting to see everything that you and Jared and the girls share. And it was so great to meet you out at Dave's property for our 
uh, for the retreat that you put on out there, actually, that I got to come and attend and be there with you and your team and Kimberly Sanders team and so much of us were there. It was so great to meet everybody in person and have the Quebecois connection. For those of you who don't know, I'm originally from Montreal myself. Um, I was born there, but I grew up in Hawaii. So it was really great to be with everybody there and just connect. So the ultimate guide to New Year's intentions, we're going to pivot. We're so grateful for everything that happened in 2023. Now let's pivot to the intentions we're setting for the new year, right? So we there's so many ways that we can set intentions for what we want. And every month we're creating a business plan worksheet and an action plan worksheet where we're setting goals for the month. And, you know, sometimes we accomplish all of them. And sometimes, you know, we don't necessarily hit the mark, but we're always growing towards that next step of growth. And we often say, this is a personal development company with a compensation plan, and we get to live a healthy lifestyle and bless others with health as well. So we have all the gifts here. And so how to set New Year's intentions and actually stick to them and create more happiness, fulfillment, and success in 2024. If the traditional model of setting goals for the new years has failed you and you're you're looking to try new approach to setting intentions for the new year this article outlines exactly what the new year's intentions and how new year's in intentions different from new year's resolutions or goals and five steps um for setting intentions for the new year so with the new year just around the corner, everyone is feeling the excitement of the blank slate, right? It's just a couple days away. I don't know why we wait till January 1st. There's the first of a month every month. Every day when we open our eyes, it's a new day and it's a new opportunity to set a new intention for the day. Set an intention for your day. Write down your gratitudes and set your intention for the day. That's a beautiful way to wake up and just set the intention and, you know, come from the heart as you move into your day. So every entrepreneur I know has gone through their fair share of challenges, obstacles, and overwhelm in the past year of knowing that you have the ability to start 2024 and do anything, be anything, create anything you want with that is enticing, right? Um, and it, with excitement. And like Allison said, in the past, she looked at Taz as like she was up on a pedestal and like, wow, she's on the million mom movement. Like I'd never be able to do that. And look at her now. Now she's on the council with us, right? So things that we may have thought, like that quote I said earlier, were, were not possible, you know, as time goes on and we learn and grow and do the personal development, we become capable of becoming that person who we think is unattainable or that we look up to, right? right? So if there's somebody that you admire, work every single day to become more like embody that what the things are that you admire in that person. If it's their leadership, if it's the way that they, you know, their smile, the way that they, you know, share on social media, whatever the things are that inspire you about them, you can, you can become that person, right? You can create the life that you want and you can duplicate what you love to see in other people. If you find somebody inspiring, become that inspiring person that you are inspired by. So let's move into the setting intentions for the new year. So how to set new year's intentions step by step. And if you want to pull out a pen and paper and set some intentions, you can do it. I dropped a little note in the comments as well for starting with your why, right? Start with your why. What is the most important thing that you want to accomplish in this next year? And and maybe this, and then you can break it down to what is the most important thing you want to accomplish in the next six months to get you there and the next three months to get you there, right? Our 90 days um, is where it all starts. And so New Year's intentions are ways to in intend to live more fully into the values for the next 12 months. So they are not specific goals, no specific resolutions. They are intentions that directly tie into your core values. So take a moment to write down what are your core values? What are the things that are most important to you, right? Just take a moment to write down what are the things most important to you? And then what's the difference between New Year's intentions and New Year's resolutions? Well, the biggest difference between New Year's resolutions, goals, and New Year's intentions is how success is defined. So, and then there's a related post that you can check out on your own later of how to redefine success and achieve it. But New Year's resolutions don't work for 90% of people because they don't account for the fact that we're human, 
life happens. There are often circumstances outside of our control that happen. And so sometimes it derails us. Don't let that happen to you. Let's set an intention for what we want and keep working towards it every single day. So if, you know, at the end of today, you didn't reach the goal that you set out to do tomorrow, when you wake up, set your five, you know, three to five gratitudes, and then start the new day with that new intention of what you want. So net new year's resolution to exercise for 30 minutes every single day leaves no room for error. 29 minutes of exercise one day out of 365 and you failed. So let's not do that to ourselves, right? If your kiddos were sick and you were up all night taking care of them, it doesn't matter. New Year's resolutions are almost impossible to meet and cause you to feel discouraged and sometimes give up on something that's important just because of your perceived failure. Nobody's failing here. And if we are, we're failing forward. We're learning along the way. We're growing, right? So New Year's resolutions fail because they discount the fact that we're human, life happens, and we can't predict circumstances outside of our control. Resolutions pressure you to focus on checking the boxes rather than reevaluating your circumstances and making a decision that aligns with your core values, like getting enough sleep and caring for your family, um, caring for yourself taking the time to, you know, create the healthy options that you want. Uh, New Year's intentions focus more on how to approach your life rather than what you accomplish. So while this may seem like a small nuance, it's a critical one because you ultimately end up accomplishing Uh, as a direct result of how consistently you work toward it. So anything that demotivates you is counterproductive. So you can also look at this related post if you like to, um, how to measure your progress on your personal growth levels, because we're all growing every single day. Every Zoom that we attend with corporate, we're learning something every time, right? I learn something every time I hear somebody's story about a product and how it helped them or, you know, how I could help somebody else that I know in my community that might be dealing with something similar, or maybe I'm learning a new trick in the back office, or we're always learning learning something new, maybe even just a recipe of how you mix your power shake with different um, superfoods and how I mix my power shake. Like, well, I've never even tried that before. I'm going to try this new recipe. So a new year's intention under the same value, physical health would be to live an active lifestyle. An intention focuses so much more on the core value itself then how you achieve it and what the outcome is. So instead of like 30 minutes of exercise every day, just exercise every day to the amount that brings you joy and pleasure and what feels good to you. And even if some days it's five minutes, some days it's an hour, right? You're going to find your balance. You're going to find what works for you, but just celebrate the small wins. We're always just moving forward. So in doing so, it becomes your most powerful tool for creating successful change in your life because it gives you room to be human, to play, explore, learn, pivot, and grow as you work towards living in alignment with your values. So why is setting intentions for the New Year's important? The process of setting intentions for New Year's is important because it helps you get clear on the ways for which you like to live your life differently so that you can make decisions that take actionable steps toward your level 10 life, right? So we're always moving forward. So if something isn't working for you today, set a new intention tomorrow that you're going to do it differently, right? okay, today that didn't work out. I did all these things. I never got my, you know, any exercise in even five minutes. Tomorrow, I'm going to do it differently. Maybe do that first thing in the day, right? Get your yoga in first thing in the day. So that way you get that accomplished and move forward with the rest of your day. Without setting intentions for the new year, you continue to fall onto old habits and patterns of behavior that leave you in the exact same place you were today. So one, five, 10 years from now, it's literally your brain's job to protect the status quo. So let's keep learning and moving forward. Examples for New Year's intentions. Let me share some of the examples with you. If you're a leader feeling isolated at the top of your organization, your New Year's intention might be to cultivate genuine connections. This can look like so many different things, joining a new sport or activity or connecting with teammates on your field or volunteering in your community, as we heard, you know, Pamela share and connecting with people you serve. Mentoring is 
an aspiring entrepreneur and connecting with them one-on-one -on -one or having more consistent date nights with your spouse, right? Figure out what the things are that are mo most important. And this goes back to your why and your core values. Those are the most important things. So as we, you know, pivot out of this call today, I'd love for you to just journal about this, write down your gratitudes, write down your why and write down your core values and work from that center. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop this um, article in the chat because I'm seeing that we're getting close to the top of the hour and I'll pass it back to you, Taz. I love that. Every thing, single thing that you said, I mean, that that's spot on, you know, this is what we need to do going forward into the new year. And you know what? Every month, why don't we put this into practice each and every single month? And, oh, thank you. Um, I know there was a video that you wanted to play, Naeva. Yes, there is. Okay. And okay. you know what? I don't know that I was able to pull it up on my, it's on my phone. So I'm going to have to log in. For always being here. Thank you to my kids. Thank you to my council members. Thank you to every single human who's here. We love you all. And we will see you again on January 5th, talking about the ULT in 90 days. This is my last day. I'm so blessed to be part of this and to be part of all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.